So today's video is going to be pretty cool. Um, I wanted to do this for a long time, and so I wanted to share an experiment we're going to do together to find out what is the best toilet paper to use when we go out in the backcountry. So as we're getting ready for the Airstream and we're prepping it, we're getting all that stuff done, we bought a composting toilet. But I also buy biodegradable toilet paper when we go backpacking. I mean, who doesn't? That kind of is the norm. But I've never tested it. And so when, as we're getting ready to, um, you know, we've learned a lot about composting. Believe me, because we have a composting toilet in the Airstream, right? So there's a lot of different things that we, you know, can use, obviously. But I've never, ever thought about testing the toilet paper I took out in the back country. I mean, I just assumed it was biodegradable, but I've seen some products out there lately, and I've seen some people post some things on some of the Facebook hiking groups, like the Appalachian Trail group specifically, that kind of concerned me. Um, and the other thing I wanted to do is, it, <laughs> I saw a video the other day that really blew my mind, and it was a guy telling you like pack it in pack it out and we're going to talk about that in today's video but what really kind of blew my mind was he was saying okay well you know take your biodegradable toilet paper and stick it and pack it out and put it in a ziploc bag and you can double that ziploc bag and put it in your backpack well that seemed like a really great idea the only problem is you're putting a biodegradable toilet paper in a non-biodegradable <laughs> piece of Ziploc plastic. So I didn't think that made sense. So I'm going to talk about that too and kind of figure it out, but I'm really excited to do our test. Okay, so I went around and I went to REI, I went to different outfitters, and I went to the general store, uh, Kroger, um, to look at different types of toilet paper and how I was going to test it. Now, normally, always, always always I always went to Walmart or REI and I just bought the Cooligans um, biodegradable toilet paper this has been my choice probably for I mean 20 years it's been around I mean, it's been around for a long time um, the Cooligans is tried and true we buy this it says biodegrad biodegradable and so I bought it but I've never tested it so I'm gonna test this guy I'm also gonna test I've seen this on Facebook a lot. I've been on the trail with guys that bring this out, and I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to test this too. This is called, no offense to women, but this is called dude wipes. And so I'm going to test that and find out. It says biodegradable on here. So everything I bought, just kind of for our experiment, everything I bought says flushable and biodegradable. Flushable and biodegradable. So we're going to test all of this stuff. The other one... Um, I see a lot on the forums is these flush wipes, flushable wipes. And so women specifically carry these on the trail because hygiene's a little bit different for them. Absolutely, right? Um, this one says no alcohol, but these are flushable wipes and these are biodegradable also. You can throw these, supposedly you can flush these down the toilet. And again, when you're on the trail, you don't really have a toilet, right? I mean, you might have, you might come across a privy, but in those rare, can, uh, in those rare circumstances, when you got to do your business in the woods, that's what I want to talk about today, specifically what to do, how to do it, and what product is the best for the environment. Um, so I want to talk about that. And then, of course, um, I didn't even think this was out here. I've never really looked at it. And again, because of the airstream and getting ready to travel in the RV. We, um, I saw Scott's rapid dissolving made for RV and boats. And so I thought, wow. So this was recommended as a toilet paper for composting toilets. So I thought, huh, I wonder if the backpacking community knows about this. So if you do, great. If you don't, oh, we're gonna test this guy out too. And then last but not least, I just went to the regular store and this is, um, Kroger toilet paper. This is, you know, like, you know, a lot of times you go to the privy. Sometimes there's toilet paper in there already. Sometimes people offer you a roll of toilet paper on the trail, especially on the Appalachian Trail. And you say, okay, thanks. And you stick it in your backpack. 
and then you use it. So I want to test that to see is that any different or any better than the biodegradable stuff. So let's kind of test that. But first I want to give you some information. This is going to blow your mind. Okay, check this out. So according, now this is an older study too, by the way. According to the Outdoor Foundation 2009 Outdoor Recreation Participation Report, 7.8 million people backpacked in 2008. Again, this is an older study. It's probably a lot more now. The report defined backpacking as spending one night outdoors and at least a quarter mile away from your vehicle, although I don't consider that a backpacking, but whatever, that's the study. Um, while it's safe to assume that many of these people were just out for a short stroll away, let's say half of them just once ventured into the wilderness, backcountry wilderness, and they set up camp where they were, you know, a few miles away from any kind of toilet. So that's three, if you cut that in half, that's 3.9 million people on average pooping and urinating in the woods. That's um, 3.9 million people a year pooping in the woods. That's a lot of poop. And so um, I wanted to kind of look at that and maybe we should start testing some toilet paper to see if we are going to poop in the woods what's the best brand to use the other thing i wanted to note too and for this for just for the video sake is that um i'm going to talk about the difference between packing it out and pooping in the and pooping in the woods for sure but one of the things i want to definitely definitely address is that you know th there's a specific way to um you know bury your feces in the wilderness a specific way and so if you don't adhere to the leave no trace principles as to bury your waste where and how you you're really putting other hikers and backpackers at risk in our next video that we're going to do we're going to talk about the norovirus because we have an expert that knows everything to know about the nor norovirus and that's Ariane because she actually got the norovirus on purpose last year through a research study on the norovirus. Um, the norovirus is present, present on the trail. So we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that today, not the norovirus, but specifically how you should bury your waste. And so we're really sticklers on that. So it's really two ways. You are either going to adhere to the leave no trace principle and, and how to bury your waste or you have to pack it out. So that's really what I want to talk about today, but I want to test if you have to pack it out or if you have to, I'm sorry, if you have to bury your waste, what is the best toilet paper to use? So that's what we're going to concentrate on. So let me show you how we're going to do this um, and a little bit about the experiment and we'll see if it works. Okay, each um, piece of toilet paper, it's going to be, I'm going to take two pieces of toilet paper each and I'm going to throw it in a ball jar of water and then we're just going to let it sit there. So um, when I come back to you in later, um, it'll be probably tomorrow, I'm going to let it sit for at least 12 hours. We're going to see what toilet paper dissolved the most and uh, if this is one ball jar worth of water and I'm just going to drop it in, I'm going to take uh, two pieces of toilet paper each so and the flush wipes will probably be only one sheet so we're just going to stick one sheet in here but each of the brands of the toilet paper I'm going to take two pieces of toilet paper two squares and I'm going to put them in here and kind of stir them up with a stick and we're going to see what we get Okay, so I left the toilet paper sit in these jars for 16 hours. Each jar got six stirs. So I stirred each jar six times with just a regular stick. Kind of stirred it around, stirred it around, stirred it around. Did that six times for each jar. So I think you're gonna be a little surprised at which one looks like it completely disappeared. It wasn't the one I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute. 
So real quickly though, I just kind of want to go over a little bit about the leave no trace and a little bit about having to pack it in, pack it out method. And so most of you guys already know this, but for new backpackers that are just getting started or specifically for our spring through hikers that are getting on the Appalachian Trail, uh, it's a good information to know. So the first thing is every part of the country gets managed by a different land management agency, whether it's your BLM, federal, state, local sometimes, and everyone has different rules on exactly what to do with um, human waste. So always know exactly what land agency you're gonna be hiking through because they have different rules for uh, packing it and packing out. There are some agencies that ask you to pack it out, um, but then there are some land agencies that offer a composting privy, which you're not supposed to urinate in. That's why it smells so bad. There's also some uh, land agencies that let you bury your waste, but there are certain rules governing exactly how to do that. For new backpackers, if you guys are not, if you guys are not um, backpacking with a trowel, shame on you. You should always have some sort of trowel with you in case you have to go in the wilderness and you have to, you know, you've got to go number two in the woods for sure. So each land agency is different. Always pack a trowel with your backpack. I don't care where you are. It's a good practice to, to do that. Um, so, uh, and then of course the second thing to do is just no leave no trace. Now Ariane and I are both leave no trace trainers, which means that we teach the awareness course all the time. You can take the awareness course for free at the leave no trace website. That's lnt.org and just take the awareness course. Um, we specifically became trainers so we could teach it on the fly at the trailhead when we take people out on our backpacking boot camp class or like we did this year when we taught the AT prep class at Mountain Crossing. So that was always part of our, our gig. Um, and then, you know, and, and some of those principles are just, you know, you're minimizing the chance of water pollution. Again, you can catch the norovirus from a creek or a stream depending on how much feces is running into the water especially when there's a low stream of water second you're minimizing the spread of disease so one of the things that we see a lot of is that okay yeah you didn't really dig the cat hole good enough um, you kind of missed the cat hole um, and so now we have a bunch of you know we have a bunch of toilet paper and feces all over around in the camp area well you know there's dogs there's wildlife you know they dig that stuff up you know and so um, that gets spread around in other places so if you if the norovirus is present that is just being spread all over so you have to really make sure you're digging your cat hole correctly um, and you're digging it properly and again, you're trying to maximize, the reason you dig your cat hole um, six inches by seven inches is that you're, you're trying to maximize how fast it degrades. And that's why we did the test with the biodegradable toilet paper to find out which toilet paper is gonna help that, that degrade the best, okay? So um, it's super, super important um, to dig the proper cat hole. So your cat hole, obviously, the minimum of 200 feet away it's about 70 steps away from the campsite away from the water away from trails that's hugely important ideally you want it to be like in a thick um, underbrush uh, that's where it's going to compost the best uh, to King Lodge or, uh, or any other places hikers aren't likely to encounter because um, you don't want again you don't want that stuff spreading all over by animals digging it up um, that's the best the actual hole must be six to eight inches deep and at least six inches in diameter so about six by seven is fine you know um, i know it's harder when it, the ground is frozen it's cold i know it's hard but if you go away from where all the ground is trampled on you usually can do pretty well and again this is all about you know the other group of people that are coming to your site um and always, 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 
always, always go away from a campsite to do your business if you can't pack it out. Again, if you can't pack it out. So, you guys ready for to see who did better? All right, let's test this. Okay, the first one we're going to take a look, take a look at is the uh, wet wipes that are flushable, biodegradable, by Quate. Um, flushable wipes, I've seen these on the trail before. I personally don't like them. But here is 16 hours of that guy. I'm going to put it up to the camera here, and then I'm going to use the GoPro to give you a different angle. So this is the Quate. You can see nothing. I'm going to film this. I've got a window right here, so we can kind of see it a little bit easier. So let's pull this guy out. This is from the Equate. Nothing. I can't even tear this thing. So you can see this flushable wipe that says it's biodegradable, that's good for the septic system, that's good for your flush toilet. Um, you know, it, it rips a little bit, but it's still very chunky. I can guarantee you this is going to clock your drain. Okay, next is the dude wipes. I hate these things. Um, they First of all, they look like you're opening up a condom, which um, these guys are say they're bio biodegradable. Here is the dude wipe. Again, it, it's a little softer, but nothing. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even rip that thing. So that is the dude wipes that I've also seen on the trail. Don't bring dude wipes on the trail. They don't biodegrade at all. Okay, so this is the Cooligans biodegradable toilet paper that you can buy for a dollar at Walmart. This is a regular Kroger brand toilet paper that you can buy, obviously, at Kroger. Regular toilet paper. It does not say it's biodegradable at all. And then this is the Scott's RV and septic toilet paper that says um, very quick to dissolve biodegradable. Now let's look at these against the light and the window and you decide which is better. <music> So in this test, just to let everybody know, they're all in the water, the, all for the exact same amount of time. They all got stirred exactly all the same way, and they are all one ply toilet paper. They are all one ply. So after looking at that in the window, you guys can judge for yourself with what I'm looking at. And again, I encourage you guys to do this yourself. Don't trust what I say. Do it yourself. But what? What I'm seeing is that the Scott's RV toilet paper rocked. I mean, it's basically just, you know, foggy water. Um, if an animal dug this up, the pieces are are so, so tiny at this point, um, it wouldn't spread anything. Um, the toilet paper wouldn't spread at all. I mean, this is going, this is really milky water um, because there's hardly anything left in here. The Cooligans toilet paper, on the other hand, is exactly the same as the regular Kroger toilet paper. There's practically no difference. So, I mean, you saw for yourself, right? Here's 
Kuligans. Here's Kroger. I mean, maybe it's a little, maybe the Kuligans is uh, uh, broke down just in a little bit of a smaller pieces, but not much, not, not much at all. Is, you know, the Kuligans a lot more compactable? Well, of course it is, but you don't really get as much bang for the buck. It's a buck, you don't get much toilet paper where you can buy the Kroger toilet paper, get four rolls for 311 square feet for three dollars so you know i mean if they're going to act the same out in the back country you know where, where are you going to get the most bang for your buck so um very very interesting um i was shocked that the Kooligans biodegradable toilet paper did not do as well or performed highly better than a regular roll of toilet paper so um, in the Scott's RV septic toilet paper, which is not found in the toilet paper section at Walmart, it is found in the RV section at Walmart. Um, that is a little bit pricier, but it's softer. It's still one ply and it completely, completely dis disintegrated much faster. So I'm gonna go and call it and I'm gonna say the Scott's RV toilet paper will be from now on packed in my backpack. Um, I know for sure it's going to degrade faster. It's going to be better for the environment. And, um, you know, that's what I'm going to bring. Okay, so um, you're, you're, you've got to pack it, uh, pack it out, right? What is the best bag to use for packing out? It's certainly not putting biodegradable toilet paper in a Ziploc bag. So what you want to do is they you want to look for wag bags that's exactly what they're called wag bags and rei sells them they're great bags the bags that they sell are actually approved by the bureau of land management which is a federal agency and what they do is they have a trademark chemical called poo powder and so you after you put your waste in that bag it helps the biodegradable process and the bag itself is biodegradable so um, and it, it's got a very, a very, very cool clinching system where you can pack it out um, in your pack safely. It's not going to leak, and it's a great bag to use. It's very safe for disposal. Uh, they, they also have an odor neutralizer in those that um, can help with any kind of odor or anything like that. Um, that's what you want to look for. The landfill agencies recommend these the bureau of land management reckon, re recommends these they are called wag bags you can get them at um, almost any outfitter but i know rei has them they usually come um, in multiple bags uh, i can't remember how many you get uh for each in each kit but would buy the kit i think the kit's around 34 dollars. i'm gonna put a link on this video right down there so just click on it take you right to the rei site and you can buy them right there um, but that's really the way to go. That's really the way to do it. So you've got two choices when you're out in the back country, obviously. Pack it in, pack it out. You wanna get the wag bags for sure. Otherwise, if you don't have a wag bag and you have to, you know, and we all have emergencies out there, um, please go 200 feet away from the campsite, water. Please dig your cat hole deep. Always bring a trowel and and buy the right kind of toilet paper. Um, I believe that the art, the Scotts RV uh, for black water, gray water, septic tanks, I believe that's the best toilet paper that I've ever seen completely disintegrate. Um, in my experiment, I in my experiment I did. And that goes to show you on a side note, don't always trust what people tell you is the best about gear. So just because someone tells you it's the best, test it yourself. You know, I mean, look how many years people have been telling me, oh, the Kooligan toilet paper, that's the best for backcountry, um, you know, going number two in the backcountry. Well, I tested it. It's not the best. So um, always, always, always test the gear yourself. Do experiments. Um, your gear is your lifestyle. And now my lifestyle is going to be carrying the Scott's RV toilet paper found at Walmart in the RV section. So anyway, please uh, give me a likes up on this video or a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, share the video with 
our outdoor community because I think they, you know, this is a huge issue, especially with norovirus coming up. Uh, we're out there already in the spring, so let's 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 really help our environment the best we can, the best possible way we can, and um, and do what's right for our outdoor community. So anyway, thank you so much, and remember, trust the trail. We'll see you later.